Dear friends in Christ, with the celebration of the Ash Wednesday, we have entered the season of Lent. It's one of the so-called strong times of the liturgical calendar, a time in which tempus forte, meaning an intensive period of Christian life. We carefully nurture our spiritual life, our prayer, fasting and almsgiving. But it's beyond these three. It's a time of reflection, time of reconciliation, time of reaching out to others, etc. Through the, this period, we prepare for the great feast of the Pasch. The Paschal mystery, which includes the passion, death and resurrection of the Lord, is being prepared through the Lenten celebration. In today's liturgy, we hear as first reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verses 8 to 15. The second reading is taken from the first letter of Apostle Peter, chapter 3, verses 18 to 22. And the third reading, the Gospel, is from Mark, chapter 1, verses 12 to 15. The Gospel passage contains just four verses. These four verses can be divided further into two. Verses 12 and 13 speak of Jesus being tested by Satan in the wilderness, while the next part, verses 14 and 15, about Jesus' proclamation. Since we have seen the second part on the third Sunday in Ordinary Time, our focus this time will be on the first part, verses 12 and 13. We read thus there, And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. That's all just two verses. Jesus is starting his ministry. As he begins the ministry, he has to go through the experience of his people Israel and of its leaders, especially Moses and Elijah. Moses had spent 40 days on Mount Sinai. It was to receive from God the revelation and directives which the people had to follow later. Elijah the prophet had to walk for 40 days and 40 nights with the heavenly food that he had received before he could reach Horeb, the mountain of God. It is the Spirit who leads Jesus to the desert. In the book of prophet Ezekiel, the prophet is transported from one place to another by the Spirit. Now the Spirit leads Jesus to the wilderness to get him prepared for the ministry. In the Bible, the desert is a place both of testing and encounter with God. There, our human needs are barely met. The harshness of the situation makes us fight for life. In this situation, the will is either weakened or strengthened. As part of the weakening of the will, the Israelites faced with the inclemency of the desert were tempted to go back to their place of oppression, Egypt. They were yearning for the flesh pots they had in Egypt. But the desert was also the privileged place of encounter with God. The Israelites had their experience too of this in the journey through the desert. Freed from the daily turmoil, they were able to experience God in the silence of the desert. Such a withdrawal is to happen in the Lent time for us as well. It should be an occasion for finding quality time for reading the word of God, of meditating it, of praying so that our life may become more authentic when we deal with the ordinary situations. In fact, the union with God will necessarily lead to communion with others. This is seen in the second part of the verse which we have read, verse 13. There it says that he was tempted by Satan and he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. This text in fact has for its background some number 91 verses 11 to 13. But there it is said, For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And you will tread on the lion and the other, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. It means Jesus was with wild animals and that Jesus was taken care of by angels as well because the angels waited on him. The story is thus. So this psalm constitutes the background for the text there in Mark 1.13. 
now the union with god will lead to communion with others with other creatures which is presented as a covenant in the first reading that we have today god is concluding a covenant with noah after the flood but the covenant with noah is not just a covenant with him alone but with the whole creation they were read then god said to noah and to his sons with him as for me i am establishing my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you the birds the domestic animals and every animal of the earth with you as many as came out of the ark so the covenant is with noah and also with every creature that was there in the ark with the whole creation a fully man centered covenant is in fact dangerous it can lead to the exploitation of this earth this has been the case till now today we are feeling the need for the protection of this earth with all its creatures in fact the human person has been created as a steward to protect and conserve this universe not to master it control it and make use of it alone this concern is expressed in fact in the encyclical letter of pope francis named laudato si laudato si the phrase taken from a prayer of st francis of assisi in the middle ages where the saint is praising god for the creation for having created this world for all the creatures of this world thus this earth ought to be conserved in its fullness and in its complexity redemption is in fact together with the creation and this is what st paul also says in the letter to romans when he speaks about the creation waiting to be redeemed there in the letter to romans paul says that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of god we know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now what paul means is that the new creation will include not only the human persons but also every creature that is there on the face of this earth the whole universe in the second reading today peter makes a definition of baptism in fact lent is a time in which we recall baptism as well and that's also the reason why baptism is explained in the second reading today peter says and baptism which this prefigured that is prefigured by the flood during the time of noah and baptism which this prefigured now saves you not as the removal of dirt from the body but as an appeal to god for good conscience through the resurrection of jesus christ that is baptism is not a removal of the dirt from the body but an appeal to god for a good conscience an appeal or prayer in fact this word appeal or prayer can also be translated as a pledge to god an appeal or prayer or even a pledge the greek word is a perotema which can mean prayer appeal or a pledge yes lent is a time for prayer and a time for pledge of communion with other human persons and other creatures of this universe therefore let's be praying during this time of lent to have union with god through prayer leading to communion with every creature and that will be a fine celebration of the lens amen